everyone. Welcome to Faith to Believe. Danny and I are so excited to come back into your home or wherever you might be watching the broadcast. We thank God for you. Yes, we have been praying for you. We pray for the broadcast consistently and we pray for our viewers. So we have been praying for you that every word that comes forth out of our mouth that God is saying something that will encourage your life, that will bless you, that will bring about a change or a healing or deliverance or just encourage you and motivate you to be even better in your life and that God loves you. We want you to know that God loves you. So we thank you so much for tuning in. And I tell you what, we've got a great topic for you today. Uh, over the last couple of days, uh, Danny, God has really kind of opened my eyes to see one or two things. Uh, you and I have a, a daughter yes. and uh, we have six grandchildren. Yes. And we are very proud of that daughter and those grandchildren. Absolutely. And uh, we're always talking about being good grandparents and being an extension to the daughter and to the fa her father, uh, to the children's father, and helping to raise and to grow up those children. But not only the ch our own grandchildren, our own daughter and grandchildren, but the children at the church. Yeah, I love those yeah. kids. Yes. Got a lot of them, too. Yeah, and we have an awesome children's ministry from nursery on through the teens and we love our children we have so many of them at the church and I was sharing about how I remember being a child growing up and mom took us to church I'm one of 12 Danny is one of seven and God my our parents would take us to church and we would never really got an opportunity to say much to the pastor or talk to the pastor or anything because they just I guess we just didn't do it back then you know our grandparents was there and everything. I know you told me your grandparents took you to church and was there with you and so was my uh, grandparents as well. So that's what birthed this topic today that we're going to be talking about. So parents, I want you to get your coffee, get your Coke, sit down and listen to us today because I believe that this word is going to encourage you and to help you to push through even those tough times, those difficult times that we sometimes experience as parents, grandparents, and as role models in the church for those little children. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 22 and 6, it says, Train up a child in the way that he or she should go. Wow. And when they get old, they will not depart from it. What does it mean to train? It means you need to show them. You need to show that child exactly how you expect them to live a godly lifestyle. Now, before you can train a child to live a godly lifestyle, you got to do it. I've got to do it. My wife has to do it. And so in part of the training process, the child gets trained, but so do we. There are certain things that I, I used to would say or do that when the children came along, I recognized. I can't do that anymore. I can't, I, can't, I can't say it anymore. Why? Because the child is watching me. Yes. If I tell the child don't smoke at the same time I'm smoking, what's my message? The kid's going to say, well, you're smoking, so I'm going to do it too. He may not say it to you, but that's his thought process. And so as we go uh, through today's uh, broadcast and we talk about training up a child, just look at where you are and, and where you want to be. Uh, we all have some shortcomings, but we can shore those things up and try to improve how we teach the child about Christ and the life that they should lead. Yes. I'm looking forward to what's going to come out of this because yes. I really don't know. Because children are watching us. They have their eyes on us. I noticed that just this week I had to go in and out of some of the schools because we have a great life skills program in the schools. And I watched then how the young ladies were looking at me and mm -hmm. how they were watching me. And I was able to interact with them and share some things with them about a few things of my past and things of that nature and what I'm expecting out of them. But at the Walk in the Word Church, as I said, we have an awesome children's ministry. And just last Sunday, after I finished ministering the Word of God, I stepped down from the stage because I always want to go into the audience and shake hands and hug and talk to everyone and the children just keep just run up to me and there was one or two young ladies that ran up to me and they grabbed a hold of my legs mm -hmm. and they held my legs and wouldn't let them go and one of the mothers said turn her loose honey get back get back and I said no no she's okay 
She's all right. Let her come to me. Let her hug me. It's quite all right. And I right then hugged her and kissed her and made sure yeah. that I knew her name because we want to make sure we're calling their names yeah. and things of that nature. So that is what inspired this message because last night, after you finished ministering, you walked out into the hall and you said, oh, my goodness, where are all these children come from? I said, yeah. Bishop, they were in children's church. Yeah. I said, they're there getting their tutoring and their snacks. They get snacks first and then they get their tutoring and then they go in and they are taught the word of God. So that once again, uh, and, and, you know, just right there, you looked and said, all these children running up and down the halls. Yeah. And we were yeah. fine with that. But let's take you to the scriptures. We gave you Proverbs oh, right. Want 22 more of and 6. Too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Proverbs 22 and 6, that tells us to train them up yeah. in the way that they should go. But this morning, I was thinking about Paul. And Timothy was one of Paul's sons in the ministry, one that Paul had taught along the way in the ministry. But listen to what Paul said to Timothy. And I was really impressed by this, you know, because it meant that Paul recognized that there was something in Timothy that had been put in him even before he met him. So in 2 Timothy, uh, Bishop, chapter 1, starting there at verse 5 and 6. 2 Timothy, chapter 1, starting at verse 5. And this is Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of, of life, which is in Christ Jesus. And Paul is speaking to Timothy, his son in the ministry. And Paul said, Timothy, when I call to remembrance the genuine faith, that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that is in you also. Wherefore, I put you in remembrance, Timothy, that you stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of thy hands. And then I read where Paul uh, says also to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15, then he said to him, And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are also to make thee wise unto salvation through which is in Christ Jesus. Paul, let's, uh, 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 Danny, let's just talk a minute there about what Paul is saying to Timothy or what he recognized. Well, he recognized what has already been put inside of him. And what happens is, if his grandmother and his mother had not instilled those values inside of Timothy, then guess what? Then those words could not have come forth. And that's today part of our, 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 our purpose here is to help you to recognize the importance of putting the Word of God inside your children. Yes. Uh, if you're watching this broadcast, it kind of tells me that somebody spoke a word of life, the Word of God, into you. And through good times and bad times, that's had an effect on who you are and who you become. And we don't want to neglect that reward or that benefit or that, that, that I'm calling some, that, that vital necessity of putting the Word of God into our children and to our grandchildren. Amen. Amen. It's important because you and I uh, 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 was sharing about how we don't want to miss time with our grandchildren and we want to speak the Word of God into them. And I look back at our grandson, Joshua, who is now 17 years old, and uh, how he got ready to go on the football field this year. But he told his mother, I'm not going on the football field until you get me to church for my grandparents to pray over me and to pray for me, and then I'll be okay. And Joshua yeah. came up with his mom. She brought him up, and we stood there, and we prayed yeah. for him because he understood the significance of prayer, and he understood that my grandparents serve a God that's real. Yeah. And if my grandparents pray, I can believe that God is going to protect me even on the football field. Grandparents, it is so important that you speak life into your children's life, that you allow them to see you praying, allow you to mm -hmm. see, you, see you serving God, allow your grandchildren to see you talking to God, I saw my, my grandmother took me to church every Sunday morning. Mom was there, but grandmother took us to church. Asked yeah. my brothers. My brothers used to hide. Their grandmother was coming every Sunday morning to get <laughs> us and take us to church. And I watched my grandmother pray. My grandfather would be on one side of the bed, and my grandmother would be on the other side of the bed. And they would pray every night. And I watched that. And I wonder why they pray every night. But now I do understand. Yes. They opened their doors, their mornings, their days with prayer, and they closed it out. And that's what Joshua knew. If I could just get to my grandparents, 
then yeah. everything's going to be okay because my grandparents serve the true and living God and we've been instilling it in them. And we've been asking them, are you praying? And, and so this morning, just this morning, uh, Joshua and his mother, you know how it is with teenagers. Come on, parents, this is real. Joshua and his mother had a disagreement. So Joshua says, I'll call grandmother. He picked the phone up and he called me and he says, Granny, <laughs> this is what happened. Can you talk to mom? Uh, Granny, I need you to fix this. He knew right then that I would call his mother. I said, okay, Joshua, go on to school. Everything's going to be fine. Have a great day. I love you. God loves you, and I bless you today. I blessed him. Know why? We didn't want him to go to school. Not having a good day, get to school, and you said something so important earlier he get to school and his day is not going well oh yeah absolutely then he could say something that he didn't mean or he could uh uh getting on the football field get hurt because of, of something that was being, very being menial by something that happened earlier that day at home absolutely so i called his his grand his mother and i said sweetheart how are you this morning what went on between you and joshua and then after i heard about it i said well I said, he's a teenager. He said it at the wrong time. He should have waited till this evening to talk to you about it. And she said, yeah, that's right. She said, but I'm just trying to teach him. I said, I understand. I said, okay, well, I'll give him a call and let him know everything's all right. Is that okay? She said, yes. And when I called him back and told him, I said, Joshua, everything has worked out. Everything is okay with you and your mom. And I said, but make sure when you get home this evening that you give her a big hug and you tell her you're sorry. He said, yes, ma'am. I love you. Wow. Yeah. I see, that, that, that changed now. Uh, in that, that story you told then, which is true, a lot of revelation comes out of that. First of all, the grandchild loves his parents, loves his grandparents. But when a little disagreement or, or not meeting, my out of aisle something, let me call Granny because I've watched Granny mediate stuff before. I know Granny's going to say the right thing, going to do the right thing. And there's been times when, when Josh was was wrong, and we told right. him you you were yeah. wrong. Okay, mm -hmm. you should not have said or done that thing. So the, the correction uh, and the uplifting comes in both directions. That's right. That's so training today, up the child. Yeah, that was training him up. But mm -hmm. what really impresses me is Joshua has this faith that I can go to my grandparents, and they're gonna make situations right. And see, so you have that same faith yes. in Christ your Savior. When things are not going right, you go to God. You go to Christ in prayer. But guess what? Your kids may not be there yet. So they got to depend upon you. Come to you, trust in you, believe in you, that you're going to do the right thing, say the right thing, be kind to them, just like you know God's going to be kind to you. And that's part of the training process, as I, would, as I would see it. Yes, and that's just what Paul was saying that he saw in Timothy. He said, Timothy, look, I know that your grandmother Lois put faith in you, taught you the word of God. I know that your mother Eunice put faith in you, and taught you the word of God. So stir up those gifts that's been put in you by the laying on of hands. Stir it up in you, Timothy, because I know what's in you. And that is so important that for you to know what you have put in your children. Parents, if you have put it in them, they may not be doing right right then. But the Bible says that they, will not go, they may go away from it, but they'll come back. And if you've put it in them, then you can rest assured that it is in them. So I encourage you. As a parent, my mother had 12 children. We had to make it to church every Sunday morning. And I know it was so difficult then, and it's even more difficult now. And I know there's single-parent homes because my mother had a single-parent home for so many years raising 12 children. But at the same time, I'm saying to you is that what we need to do is bring our children to church. Allow the church to help you to raise your children and grow them up. Mama took us to church. So that the church could help. Grandmother took us to church so that once that child got in church, now the church is teaching mm -hmm. and training them the things that they need to know so that they will become the adults that you want to be proud of and that they should be. So parents, you know, I know it's a little, we got so much going on. You're working. Some of you may be working two jobs. Some of you got children. There's only one single parent home. So many single parent homes. I understand all of that. But what I'm saying is that's going to help you is if you can get your child to church, if you can just say, hey, look, I'm going to take you all this morning. I can't because I need to cook and have food ready for you get there. I'm going to make sure you get to some training because parents, we need that today. We need to train our children up in the way that they should go. And I guarantee you when they get old, they will not depart from it. So once again, 
And we just want to encourage you because the word of God says that Jesus loves the little children. Which we're, Let's go to, in our Bibles, Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10, starting there at verse 13. Mark chapter 10, starting at verse 13. Let's see what the word of the Lord is saying and what, see what Jesus had to say about it. I could take you to the Old Testament, which I do want to, and show you how God says to teach them, write it up on the doorpost, let those, not let that word depart from them, teach them morning, teach them day, and teach them night. That's what the word of God says. But even Jesus was concerned about the children. I am concerned about the children. I'm in and out of the schools, and I, my heart goes out to them. I'm talking to the young ladies and to the young men and letting them know that, yes, somebody loves them, but I found out so many of them feel unloved and are going through things. And, yes, we went through things too, but, Danny, things are a little bit tougher now. I didn't have the Internet to talk to me. I didn't have the iPad and phones and things like that to discourage me in the wrong direction. Our children deal with so much today. Well, they have the whole world in, a, in the palm of their hands. That's right. And it's hard to police who's talking to them through these, through these electronic devices. They're good, but then they do pose a threat uh, for people going through cyberbullying and things of that nature. But that's not today's subject. We're going to train them up the right way. Yes, and we want to encourage you to, to bring your children to the house of God. They don't have to dress no certain way. They just need to put on their clothes they and come. come to the house of God, receive breakfast, receive a meal, and come in and receive the word of God among teachers that we know that love them. But not only that, pastors that walk the halls and allow them to, to hug on us and that we talk to them. I had one little, one, 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 I won't call his name out, but he came running to me last night and he said, Pastor, he said, can I sing my song? And I said, yeah. sure you can sing your song. I said, let me find out when you all are supposed to come back out again on the stage and sing, and you can sing your song. I said, are you ready? He said, yes, ma'am, I'm ready. I said, you know the words? He said, yes, ma'am, I know the words. I want to sing my song. I said, okay. Now, I'm going to follow up on that. I'm going to get with, his di with the director over the, and the pastor, the youth pastor, over the ministry because there's once a month that they come out on the stage and they sing and do their speech, their speeches, their uh, scriptures and things of that nature. And I'm going to make sure that he gets to sing his song. But now, that's what I'm talking about. And the Bible tells us right here in Mark chapter 10. And I'm reading from the King James Version. And I'll read it. Danny, you want to read it? You want me to read it? Oh, let me read it. Okay. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Okay. Says, then they brought little children to him, that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them. For of such is the kingdom of God. Wow. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter in it. Now, the King James says this a little bit differently. He says, suffer not the little children. And he's simply saying, don't you dare, don't you dare keep these children away from me. Uh, can, I, can I paraphrase? Don't you dare keep these children away from church. Yes, and what Jesus said, he he wanted the disciples to allow the little children to come to them. The little children was brought to Christ in this situation because many adults were coming to Christ in that text to where Jesus was healing them and delivering them and setting them free. So when the, the, the parents brought the little children to Christ, the disciples said, Send them, no, stop, no, 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 they can't, they can't come, they can't, they, no, and they, I could see them, all of them, because I said the disciples was pushing mm -hmm. the children back, and the parents, uh, I want to read this, the parents or whoever they were that had the nursing of them brought them to him that he should touch them in token of his commanding and conferring a blessing on them. Wow. And it did not appear that they needed any bodily cure. In other words, they were not sick or anything, nor were they capable of being taught. But it seems that they had the care of them, the parents, in other words, who had the care of them, were mostly concerned about their souls, their better part, which ought to be the principal care of all parents for their children. For mm -hmm. that is the principal part, and that Absolutely. is their soul. And it is well with them if it be well with their souls. So these parents knew that the child was not sick, didn't have leprosy, was not crippled, was not lame, was not blind, but the child, the parents brought the children to Jesus, wanting Jesus to bless them, and also understanding that Jesus 
could do something about their souls. And that that was the most important part of them was their souls. And when they believed that Christ's blessing would do the soul good, Jesus being who he is, the discerner of all things, <laughs> he discerned that this was a great thing, this is a good thing. So he taught, that brought the children to him. But he rebuked the disciples. He said, don't you dare stop these children from coming to me. Let them come to me because Jesus placed his hands upon them and he blessed them. That touch for those children meant so much because Jesus, the true and living God, yeah. all powerful, all knowing Jesus that was causing man to walk and eyes to be open is now placing his hands on the children, touching them, and that touch was so important to them. See, they believed that Christ's blessing would do their souls good, and therefore to him they brought them that he might touch them, knowing that he could reach their hearts when nothing their parents could say to them or do for them would reach them. Let me tell you something. Your child can be rebellious, can be disrespectful, be disobedient, but bring them into the church and something can be said through a song, through the, the preacher, through the teacher in the classroom that would touch the heart of that child and change that child. That's why we got to bring them into the presence of God. That's why we got to bring them to church. You know, on Sunday mornings, I hate to be the grandparent to call back home and say, I said, good morning, baby girl. How you doing? We call her baby girl. How you doing? Are you all up this morning? <laughs> That's what my <laughs> grandmother used to do to me. Are you all on your way to church? You know, I called the other morning. Baby girl was out of town. I called Sarah. Sarah's 11 years old. I said, Sarah, I said, y'all up? She said, yes, ma'am. I said, y'all going to church? She said, yes, ma'am. I said, okay. I said, I just want to check on you all. Everybody good? <laughs> she said, yes, ma'am. Me and Joshua and, and, and Jacob, we're getting ready to go to church. I said, all right. Then tell everybody hello. I wanted to check Absolutely. because my grandmother checked to make sure I went to church. I couldn't imagine what may could have happened in my life if I had not been in church. There were so many times that I would have gone to, done, to do something wrong, mm -hmm. but because I had a consciousness of I don't want to disappoint mama, I don't want to disappoint grandmama or granddaddy, and I don't want God to be angry with me because I had been going to church. Right. So then I wouldn't do it. Yeah, And that passage of uh, scripture uh, that you just shared with us, uh, I could see the adults coming to Jesus because they had a need. They had an infirmity that they needed healing from. And so the disciples will just line them up, get this healing, this healing, this healing. And then the children, they saw that sincerity. They saw that love that Jesus poured out. And they were going to come up and be loved. And so the disciples said, these kids are not sick. They're, they don't have a problem. So they're in our way. Jesus said, no, 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 no. Let these children come. Because Jesus was going to minister to the part that we could not see the children. Yes. So he began to give love to them, give faith to them. You know, when a child runs up to you as a pastor or as a provider and they hug you, they say, I trust you to comfort me, to protect me. I protect you to be good to me. And that's what Jesus was showing those children. I'm here for you. There's nothing physically wrong. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure that spiritually that you're okay. And that's why we encourage you to bring your children to church. Amen. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he's old, now in between your training period, and they're growing up through adolescence and things like that. We know we do what we did at that age. But guess what? When you have that Something basic in foundation of Jesus Christ that's been instilled in them, they know the way back home. And they, they know the way like, back to God. Yes, and they will be like what Paul saw in Timothy. Absolutely. Because it had already Absolutely. been put in him. It was so in Paul it. saw that in him, Timothy, that Lois put in him, and that Eunice put in him. So we're encouraging parents today. Put the right things in your children. Say the right things to them. But most of all, get help by bringing them to church. The church is available to help raise up children and train them up. We're standing there at the doors every Sunday morning saying, bring your children to church. We'll feed them. We'll teach them the word of God. We'll love on them. And we'll send them back to you with a good attitude, learning the things of God. I want to share this with you. This was something that I, I pulled up and I wanted to share it. There was a little four-year-old girl who became frightened late one night during a thunderstorm. After one particular loud clap of thunder, she jumped up from her bed, ran down the hall, burst into her parents' room, jumped right in the middle of the bed. She saw her parents' <laughs> arms of comfort and assurance. 
Don't worry, honey, her father said, trying to calm her fears. The Lord will protect you. The little girl snuggled closer to her father and said, I know that, Daddy, but right now I need someone with skin on. <laughs> <laughs> the child understood that I know that God will protect me, but right now, yeah. Daddy, with that thunder and lightning going on, I need to know that need you're you. here for me. I need a touch. I need yeah. you to hug me. I need you to, to be here and let me know that everything is going to be all right. So that's why we want to encourage you to bring the children to church. I want to pray right now. Danny and I want to stand in agreement and pray with every parent right now because we know that it's difficult. Well, like I say, we're, we're, we're helping to raise grandchildren through, yeah. through prayer and things and a, and a church full of children that we love so dearly to yes, be an extension. Indeed. So we want to pray for right now for every parent. God, I thank you right now. Yes, we thank you for every parent that is watching this broadcast. Yes, that, you, Father, Lord. you will give them the encouragement that they need. The yes. strength, Father, yes, that as they're going through trying times and difficult times, some raising three and four and five and six children, sometimes yes, even Lord. on their own and feeling alone. Father, you said you'd never leave them nor forsake them. I send forth right now the spirit of encouragement to your heart, to every parent that is listening, yes, that Lord. God is with you and he loves the little children. And he'll be there to provide. He is Jehovah Jireh. He will provide for you. He will take care of you. He will protect you. He will do provide those things that you need for your children. So suffer not the little children. Bring them on to the house of God so that you can have help raising them up. And when they get old, they will not depart from it. Now, God bless every parent under the sound of our voice. Give them that encouragement. Give them that yes, strength Lord. and yes, provide Lord. every need. In the yes, name of the Jesus, name we, of Jesus pray. we pray. Amen and amen. amen. God amen. bless you today, parents. Danny and I love you. We yeah. encourage you to bring your children to walk in the word church or to whatever church you can get them to. Yes. If you need a ride, just give us a call. We will be more than happy to send out the van to pick them up, bring them to church, and I guarantee you we'll love on them. We'll train them up in the way that they should go, and we'll believe, God, that when they get old, they will not depart from it. Amen. And we'll love on you, too. Amen, because God wants us to, we got to have the yeah. word. That's just he it. We, we have to have the word of God as adults, as yes. parents. Yes. You know, I could pull from my own experience when those grandparents, when those grandchildren call or uh, come to see us or when the children at the church come, come yeah. crying and having problems yeah. and things of that nature. So yeah. we're praying for you. We say we God love give us you. instruction to give to them. That's yeah. right. Amen. We're praying for you. God bless you. We love you. And we will see you the next time right here on, on Faith, Faith to, to Believe. believe.